to the temporary chapel here in the vicarage at St Margaret's Ilkley for this service for the last Sunday after Trinity, the final Sunday of October 2020. Um, our, uh, today is Friday morning that we're recording this service for the Sunday uh, and our weekly newsletter should be uh, landing everybody's inbox this morning. Uh, next Sunday is uh, the 1st of November, which of course is All Saints Day, and we shall be celebrating All Saints Day with the Mass in Church uh, at 10 o'clock. Uh, for the re this recorded uh, YouTube Premier Mass, we shall be celebrating All Souls Day, um, when of course it's traditional that we pray for our dearly departed loved ones. Um, I've put this all in the newsletter this week, but if there are particular names that you would like me to read out uh, in the Mass next, uh, YouTube Mass next Sunday, uh, of uh, your departed loved ones, could you please email them to Vicky uh, by Wednesday of this coming week, and we'll then gather the names together and prepare ready to record uh, at this time next week for the following Sunday. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Grace, mercy and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. And also, and also with you. God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, Jesus Christ, to save us from our sins, to be our advocate in heaven and to bring us to eternal life. Let us confess our sins in penitence and faith, firmly resolve to keep God's commandments and to live in love and peace with all. Almighty God, our Amen. Heavenly Father, we, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour, in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may serve you in newness of life, to the glory of your name. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Glory be to God in the highest, and peace to his people. Let us pray. 
Blessed Lord, who has caused all holy scriptures to be written for our learning, help us so to hear them, to read, mark, learn, and inwardly digest them, that through patience and the comfort of your holy word, we may embrace and forever hold fast the hope of everlasting life which you have given us in our Saviour Jesus Christ, who is alive and reigns with you, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from the first letter of St Paul to the Thessalonians. You yourselves know, brothers and sisters, that our coming to you was not in vain, but though we had already suffered, and been shamefully maltreated at Philippi, as you know, we had courage in our God to declare to you the gospel of God in spite of great opposition. For our appeal does not spring from deceit, or impure motives, or trickery, but just as we have been approved by God to be entrusted with the message of the gospel, even so we speak not to please mortals, but to please God who tests our hearts. As you know, and as God is our witness, we never came with words of flattery, or with a pretext for greed, nor did we seek praise from mortals, whether from you or from others, that we might have made demands as apostles of Christ. But we were gentle among you, like a nurse tenderly caring for her own children. So deeply do we care for you, that we are determined to share with you not only the gospel of God, but also our own selves, because you have become very dear to us. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Firmly I believe and truly God is three, and God is one, and I next acknowledge duly man who taken by the Son. And I trust and hope most fully in that manhood crucified, and each thought and deed unruly do to death as he has died. Simply to his grace and holy light and life and strength belong, and I love <coughs> so grimly, solely, him the holy, him the strong. And I hold in veneration for the love of him alone. Holy Church is his creation and her teachings as his own. Adoration may be given with and through the angelic host to the God of earth and heaven, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Alleluia. the implanted word that has the power to save your souls. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Hear the 
Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to St. Matthew. Glory, Glory to you, o Lord. Lord. When the Pharisees heard that he had silenced the Sadducees, they gathered together and one of them, a lawyer, asked him a question to test him. Teacher, which commandment in the law is the greatest? He said to him, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the greatest and first commandment. And a second is like it. You shall love your neighbour as yourself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Now while the Pharisees were gathered together, Jesus asked them this question. What do you think of the Messiah? Whose son is he? They said to him, The son of David. He said to them, How is it then that David by the Spirit calls him Lord, saying, The Lord said to my Lord, Sit at my right hand, until I put your enemies under your feet. If David thus calls him Lord, how can he be his son? No one was able to give him an answer, nor from that day did anyone dare to ask him any more questions. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. May the words that I speak and the words that you hear be in the name of God, who is Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Today's Collect is one of the most beautiful and memorable of these prayers found in our prayer books. I hope you don't mind me repeating it to set the context of this homily. Blessed Lord, who caused all Holy Scriptures to be written for our learning, help us so to hear them, to read, mark, learn and inwardly digest them that through patience and the comfort of your holy word, we may embrace and forever hold fast the hope of everlasting life, which you have given us in our Saviour Jesus Christ. In the formational 1662 Book of Common Prayer, this collect was to be prayed on the second Sunday of Advent. Many of us of a certain age will remember and place this collect as part of our Advent prayer and worship, alongside the equally memorable and haunting collect for Advent itself, with its bidding that we should cast away the works of darkness and put upon us the armour of light. However, modern liturgists, for good reason, have rethought the shape of Advent and given it a much more coherent and thematic pattern such that this collect has been retained, but moved to this final Sunday of the Trinity season. This collect is a work and creation of Thomas Cramner, the writer and founder of our Book of Common Prayer. He wrote it in 1549 for his first version of the BCP. And as is characteristic of many of Cramner's own colleagues, it harmonised originally with the epistle he chose for the second Sunday in Advent. Romans chapter 15 verse 4 begins, Whatsoever things were written aforetime were written for our learning, that we through patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. Of course, Cramner takes up these words of St Paul by inviting us to pray that, through patience and comfort of thy holy word, we may embrace and forever hold fast the hope of everlasting life. However, I suspect for most of us, this collect is most deeply memorable for the way in which Cramner emphasises the central importance of Scripture by using four verbs consecutively, one after the other, inviting us to pray that we may read, mark, learn, and inwardly digest them. Here we have Reformation theology at its very best, 
the rediscovery of the Bible and placing the hearing and the reading of the scriptures in one's native tongue and language at the very heart of the life of the ordinary Christian. This prayer reflects the priorities of Cranmer and his many allies at that time in history. It is no coincidence that Cranmer wished to place this prayer as early as possible in the Christian year, on only the second Sunday after Advent itself. This is one symbolic use of the prayer that we have lost by its translation to this Sunday in our church year. In the second letter to Timothy, the author says that all scripture is inspired by God, unprofitable for teaching, for reproof, for correction and for training in righteousness. Cramner clearly draws on this verse for the opening of his collect. One of Cramner's fellow reformers, Luther, said that the Holy Scriptures are the manger in which Christ is born. In other words, both he and Cramner knew that for Christ to be born in our hearts, we had to both hear and read our Bibles. It is very noticeable that before his four consecutive verbs, Cramner fir Cramner's first verb is to hear the scriptures, only then followed to, by to read. That we may feel somewhat surprising in our culture, but this marks a time when people were hearing the scriptures read aloud to them in their own tongue for the very first time. And it's for difficult for us to appreciating to, for us to appreciate just how exciting this would have been for them. It was a spiritually exhilarating and exciting period when most common people would have been enthralled to have heard these words and understood them for the very first time. The joy and excitement of this hard-won prize is something we can now so casually take for granted. After hearing and reading, we are then invited to learn and inwardly digest. The reformers wanted the Christian not only to hear and to read, but also to learn the scriptures and be taught and informed by them. This learning is surely double-edged, that we learn the scriptures as pupils, but that we may also learn from them, that we may be able to apply them in our daily lives. Inwardly digest is powerful imagery for how the scriptures too can also be placed at the heartbeat of our prayer and spiritual lives, using them as a means and vehicle of our meditation. Inwardly digest invites a slow, absorbing, reflective reading of the scriptures filled with patience and perseverance. It can be both studious and spiritual in different ways, and from these we gain both comfort and understanding. Finally, Cramner does not let us off the hook. He ends by making clear the ultimate purpose of the scriptures and the necessity of the Christian to engage with their Bibles. We should read, mark, learn and inwardly digest because by it we shall indeed embrace and ever hold fast the hope of everlasting life. Cramner's imagery here is tender and personal. Embracing is a two-way action between those who love each other. God embraces us wholly as we seek to embrace him in his holy word. Our devotion to his word will be a wonderful and constant help in our reaching out to receive the love of God. Through it, we are enabled to hold fast to him and in it we receive the blessings of our hope of everlasting life. As the Latin phrase goes, lex orandi, lex credendi, what we pray 
is what we believe. And Cramner had a divinely inspired ability to articulate these truths through the prayers that he wrote, which still deeply inspire and inform the Church's devotion today. Amen. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again, in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen in the power of God's Holy Spirit, and in union with our Saviour Jesus Christ, we offer our prayers to our Heavenly Father. Heavenly Father, we thank you today that indeed all Holy Scripture has been written for our learning. And we pray that in our worship we may truly hear them. And that in our private study and prayer we may indeed read, mark, learn, and inwardly digest all that is given to us in our Bibles. Give us patience in our engagement with Scripture, that through our perseverance we may know the gift of your comfort, that embracing your word you may indeed embrace us, that we may live with the hope of the gift of everlasting life. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for all who teach and expound Holy Scripture today, especially within and from God's Church. For all preachers. For all who comment and write and draw upon Scripture as they speak to the world today. For the work of societies such as the Scripture, New Scripture Union who propagate the use of the Holy Bible. We pray for the missionary societies of our church and for those who distribute Bibles today in native tongues that people may meet the Word of God. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for our own parish church of St Margaret. We give thanks for the ministry amongst us of Bishop Toby, Bishop Nick and Archdeacon Andy. We pray for all members of our church as we prepare for the forthcoming vacancy. We pray for the annual meeting to put, take place next month and for those considering to stand for our new church council and for other roles that our church may prosper during the time of vacancy. We pray too for our staff, for Vicky working in our office and for our caretaker Alan, for Christopher our director of music and for Catherine our verger, for all that they undertake for us that they may be supported in their work and ministry. We pray too for Beverly who is our bookkeeper.
Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for God's world, for its peace and stability, and for different parts of the globe as they wrestle with the coronavirus, spreading in different places and at different rates. And so we pray particularly for our own nation, for our government as it grapples with the virus and appropriate ways to respond. And we pray too for local cities and councils and mayors and for all who are making profound decisions which affect the lives and businesses and health of each other. For Elizabeth our Queen, for the High Court of Parliament. And we pray for the media of our nation and for all who communicate what is going on that they may do so responsibly and for the common good. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for our own town of Ilkley and for our parish. We pray for its life of commerce. We pray for those whose employment is in danger or, or who indeed have already lost their jobs. For those who live with financial anxiety. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. And so we pray for the health and well-being of all those in our parish. We pray particularly for those in our own community who have the coronavirus. We remember Alison and James Stretton. And on the sick list of our parish, we continue to name Trevor Allen and Anne Brun, Lauren Green, May Hughes, Father Garth Callett, Anne Kilvington, and Peter Kachatschuk. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for the souls of the recently departed, and we pray especially for two faithful priests who served for much of their lives as priests of our church. For Father George Darville, and for Father John Dilmot. And we pray for their families in this time of grief and for the preparation for Father George's funeral this coming week. And in memoria this week, we're asked to offer the souls of Tom Holt, Trevor Gibbons, Paddy Roche Priest, Olive Lynn Shaw, Audrey Harrison, Frank Elliott, Doris Kathleen Parkinson, Christine Thompson, Graham Wilson, Frederick Cannell, Norman Hornsby, Michael James Ormondroyd and Howard Riley. Rest eternal, grant unto them, O Lord. And let light perpetual shine upon them. May they rest in peace. And rise in glory. And so we unite our prayers with those of the saints of God's Church. We give thanks today for the life and witness of John Henry Newman, of Thomas Cramner, and also of our patron Margaret and Mary the Mother of God. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ. Amen. Christ is our peace. He has reconciled us to God in one body by the cross. We meet in his name and we share in his peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, through your goodness we have this bread to offer which earth has given, and human hands have made, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God for ever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, through your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and the work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God for ever. Pray, brothers and sisters, that this our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands, for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his church. The Lord be, the Lord be with you, and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. Father, we give you thanks and praise through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ. Your living word through whom you have created all things. Who was sent by you in your great goodness to be our Saviour. By the power of the Holy Spirit he took flesh, as your Son, born of the Blessed Virgin. He lived on earth and went about among us. He opened wide his arms for us on the cross. He put an end to death by dying for us and revealed the resurrection by rising to new life. So he fulfilled your will, and won for you a holy people. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forever praising you and singing. Holy, holy, holy Lord God, glory glory be to thee O Lord most high Amen Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. You are holy indeed, the source of all holiness. Grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit and according to your holy will, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, who in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, 
This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. And so, Father, calling to mind his death on the cross, his perfect sacrifice made once for the sins of the whole world, rejoicing in his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming in glory, we celebrate this memorial of our redemption. As we offer you this our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, we bring before you this bread and this cup, and we thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. Send the Holy Spirit on your people, and gather into one in your kingdom all who share this one bread and one cup, so that we, in the company of Margaret our patron, Mary the Mother of God, and all the saints, may praise and glorify you for ever, through Jesus Christ our Lord. By whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory be yours, O Almighty Father, forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray with confidence, as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thy is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. That we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. Lamb of God, that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sins of the world, Us thy peace. This is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Happy are they who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you. But only say the word, and I shall be healed.
body of Christ. Amen. The body of Christ. Amen. Let us pray. God of all grace, your Son Jesus Christ fed the hungry with the bread of his life and the word of his kingdom. Renew your people with your heavenly grace, and in all our weakness sustain us by your true and living bread, who is alive and reigns now and for ever. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. The peace of God which passes all understanding keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you, and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. The Mass is ended. Go in the peace of Christ. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. I do not ask to see the distant scene One step enough for me I was not ever thus Nor prayed that thou shouldst lead me on I look to choose and see my path, but now lead thou me on. I love the garish day, and spite of this, pride ruled my will. Remember not past years. The path hath blessed me, sure it still will lead me on. O moor and fen, o crag and torrents, till the night is gone. And with the morn, those angel faces smile, which I have loved.